Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and today we are going to be speaking with Jonah Santana. He is of Blackbird Cigars, and uh, we uh, had this scheduled before TPE, and then we talked a little bit at TPE, but now we're getting a little bit more time with Jonas. We're going to talk all about his new cigar, the Superb, as well as his uh, line of wallet-friendly cigars, the uh, the Glitch. And we're going to find out a little bit more about what's going on at Blackbird Cigars. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the interview. And uh, I will catch you guys on the uh, the flip side of that. And guys, we're joined today by Jonas Santana of Blackbird Cigars. How are you doing, Jonas? What's up, Nick? I'm very good. And you, what's up? I'm living life, man. I'm doing all right. So... Now, I know we're on a bit of a time schedule because you're out in California and you're going to be boarding a plane here soon. Yeah, that's a traveling life, I guess. I <laughs> guess so. Now, you had some events out there, right? Yeah, I did one on Ohlone Cigars in uh, Fremont, California. Very cool. Very cool. How'd that go? It went very good. Very good. I The taxes here is a little horrible for, for the yeah. <laughs> cigars. like. Uh, it's a little crazy, but I got the support from the people. I got to know everybody, give the explanation of the of the of the company, what we do, everything. They all enjoy it. What I did over there was the component tasting event, so that gave me the opportunity to really have a sit down with them. Yeah, now, buy so and so and get so and so, and then there's no talking about the brand. It's just a deal that any retail don't need any any owner of brand to make it happen. So yeah. For me coming here, I think it was great. Jeb Smith is one of the owners, and he was great with me. Fantastic. So I have you here because we got a couple things to talk about. Specifically, first, I would like to discuss the new cigar, the Superb. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now, I'm going to be firing up my Superb. And uh, I got a little get get a little bit of housekeeping in going here. So so it's time to cut the cigar. And the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company in Crestwood, Missouri. And guys, Dan the Man Ponder, if you're looking for a nice cigar shop to go and enjoy uh, a nice sit down and and cigar in, he's got uh, a nice lounge in the back that you can sit and chill in. Um, weather's getting nicer here in St. Louis, but you know it's February, so. It could very easily switch on a dime, but on a day like today, as I'm recording this, I think we're going to hit like near 70. So it'd be a great day to sit out under that 1500 square foot covered patio. He's got out front, bring your lawn chair, sit out, enjoy the nice day. But if you, if you, if it's a bad day and you can't do that, sit in the lounge. It's great. So if you're looking to support a brick and mortar shop and you don't have one near you, Dan does mail order. So you can give him a call and he will ship a nice supply of cigars to you right away. But otherwise, if you're in the St. Louis area, swing on by Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's time I go ahead and cut my cigar. Uh, I'm now gonna be you, right now. I'm gonna be I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna be jealous because I'm gonna be inside of a hotel room and you're gonna be enjoying a cigar that I can't right now. I mean, you could have gone out to the patio, but you know that's 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 your choice. I mean, whatever. Ah, uh, well, I'm <laughs> sure that you, I listen to you and you listen to me. <laughs> Oh, my. So cold draw on the superb here. Hopefully it doesn't taste like coffee and frosted flakes, because that's what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> um, hmm. Unfortunately, I am getting kind of coffee notes off of it, so I may have ruined my palate with my coffee a little bit earlier. But let, tell me a little bit about the cigar. Can you uh, tell me about the superb kind of the makeup and, you know, what what all people should be expecting from this cigar? Well, first, I got to tell you that um, in mid-2021, we decided to that to focus in how to level up all, all our blends. Yeah. So we need a bigger space. We need how to we make them look better, like better boxes, better bands, everything. So we start working to building the new factory that we currently work right now. So after we had the space and everything ready to work, so we, we dedicate our efforts only to perfect every single blend that we that we do. So let's say every time you go to a shop now and, and find Blackbird cigars, 
you will see a change to the positive way, like same blend in essence, but more fermentation, more uh, different process. The cigars are yeah. much more before we get there. So after we perfected the all of our blends, so we decided, okay, it's the right time to make an addition to the line. And because also by adding a new cigar, it will caught people attention because if it's the same the same probably they they don't they would then they're not gonna be like i want to try no by having the superb a new addition people will probably retry again the other blends if they like the superb enough so we're not really telling the whole blend of the of the superb but it's a cigar that you're supposed to get nutmeg you're supposed to get some dominican uh leather let's say uh creamy the harmony is very elegant like it tastes nothing like Blackbird we have done in the past. That's something that, let's say, it's a little risky sometimes because you got to really play with a lot of tobacco in order to differentiate. You know, depending where you are based as a factory, you're always going to have access to a certain type of tobacco, which is easier than, you know what, we want to get something different. It is easier to work with the tobacco where you are. But always, all the times, is we make the crow... The, the Raven before on kind, we said we don't want those, our cigars to taste like Dominican. That's what we wanted at the at first place. Probably Superb will, will have a little Dominican taste because that's the tobacco that we didn't work once once we did the core line. It's different. So okay. every time everybody's going to have smoke a Superb, they say, bro, it's like the name. Superb is the bird. The bird of the paradise. So I'm just trying to take you in a trip to paradise once you smoke the superb and have a superb day. <laughs> I will say this is the second one that I've had now. Um, I had the one at TPE that I had at your booth with you. And then um, this is now the second one. And the one I'm, I'm thinking back to the one at TPE and it was a very, very um, uh, the, the the construction on it was was awesome. I mean, the the draw on it was perfect and everything, burn line and all that. But but the flavor, it was very flavorful and it had some um, strength to it. But it wasn't like sitting on my chest. It wasn't you know slitting my throat or anything like that. It was it was a a nice solid. I'd say medium. You know, so when you get into it, when you at the beginning, I think it's actually a, a kind of a lighter medium in the in the in the offset but i think as you get into the cigar it gets to be more of a medium um i will say off the right off the foot you know uh lighten it up i did a couple retro hails there while you were talking and uh uh there is some 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 spice component to the retro hail mm -hmm. off the very beginning but you're right you get that kind of baker spice nutmeggy kind of kind of component and and it's it's nice it's a it, I, I i told you at the show after smoking it the first time that yeah. uh, this is now my favorite product that you guys put out. <laughs> um, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I love, I, I, I smoke the unkind and uh, the rook. I think those are my two that I, that I smoke on the regular from you, but, but this one has, has kind of taken it's, that top spot and, and that's only after one cigar. And then now this little bit. So, Every single person have tell me the same thing. They tell me this is my new favorite, and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Like if you like one cigar more than the other, because at the end of the day, that's why we have variety. Whatever Nick likes, maybe your friend is gonna not gonna like it. Maybe he will like more the crow and whatever. But the funny thing is, of course, you you're feeling more quality and more harmony. You're gonna get more of the uh, seeds are probably tasting notes over here. But once you try the crow from our new factory, you're also going to be like, I was not expecting this. So there's a little tricky right there. Like, yeah, people's going to be with the new favorite, superb. Amazing. Yeah. I'm very happy about it. But once they give the chance to the other cigars again, now the cigars making at the new factory, that's going to be a bottle. <laughs> well, okay. So I'll say this. Um, I also was privileged to try the, um, the new Rook. You had that at, at Vegas, and one of your guys at the booth slipped me one of those, and I smoked that too. And that was a tasty, tasty cigar. Still like the superb a little bit more, but that new rook, man, that was that was pretty awesome as well. Did you compare it with the old rook? Like your memories? Nah, I mean, I, not as much as I probably could. It, it's been a minute, so like, yeah, probably not. But 
Um, I know a place here in uh, in my area that I can very quickly go and snag an old rook, assuming that how long have you been shipping out the new stuff or have you? Mm, this year, I, well, last quarter of, of last year, I was shipping okay. out stuff. Okay, and, so may, maybe or maybe not. I don't know. I think people's really going to feel the new stuff uh, anytime now. Okay, okay. Anytime now after TP, then after PCA. Then, so let's say March, April, people's really going to start feeling uh, the new the new productions well that we created at the last quarter of last year, you know, because we like to give them four to six months before we ship. Um, what's the shop you're talking about that you find uh, our cigars in your area? Uh, I believe the Hill, correct Hill me cigar. if I'm wrong. Yeah, Hill Cigar, I believe Hill you're cigar. there. They yeah. changed owners if I'm not wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Tron is now the uh, owner there. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can track down an, an older rook and then, uh, you know, I'll compare it once I can get my hands on a, one of the newer ones and we'll do a side by side. We'll, we'll double fist them. There we go. That sounds like well, a nice. I'm going to do something know. with you so you can have more interesting stuff to do a uh, uh -oh. uh -oh. couple of days. All right. I'm going to see in the warehouse if I have the old rook or all the old cigars, if I have it. And I'm going to ship you two packages for you to have some entertainment. And then you tell me if you want to do, you know, if you can have something out of that for content for your for your cigar pulpits as well. Oh, for sure. So you're going to have a six pack of the old and six pack of the new. And you do your comparison. I told you, man, we'll sit down, we'll double fist them and we'll, we'll literally side by side and see what we can get out of it. That sounds like oh, a fun sure. plan. So, well, now, um, when, when, OK, so let's back up. Let's talk nuts and bolts for a moment. So the superb it it launched at TPE, yeah. And then when can folks start expecting to see this hitting shops in okay. uh, their area? Packed in boxes in the new boxes that you saw. Uh huh. Shipping in March. Whoever is getting the cigars at the moment are the people that is not going to put the cigars on the shelf, so it's not going to downgrade my brand. It's monthly clubs. So also, you know, the cigars are that the guys are gonna get the monthly clubs, so they only get one cigar. So after that, of course, they will return to see if they want a box or half a box or whatever. Yeah. And so monthly clubs and guys that have six packs for online retailers. So after that, then they're gonna get packs in boxes in you know throughout the country in different retail shops. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So later this spring, you know, folks can start. March, for April, the, yeah. March, April, people can start looking for the superb in their local brick and mortar or, you know, online if, uh, you know, prior to that. So sounds good. Now, the other cigar I wanted to talk about, and that was the glitch. Oh. And <laughs> now this guy, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that came out about a year ago. Right. Uh, July. When that's when I start shipping a, a year. OK. Ago. OK. July more okay, less. so maybe maybe not quite a year ago, but uh, July around that. Talk to me about this. This is one I don't. I'll be honest. I think maybe I got them from you at TP last year, and I was going through my humidor and I found this little pack of them, just kind of like it was like a Toro and a Robusto, and uh, I'm like, that's funny. I don't remember. I I'll be honest. I didn't remember getting it, and I mean, I feel bad that we didn't talk about this sooner, but you know, so I. I cracked one open uh one of the packs open because i had the habano and i had a maduro and um you know i'm looking at it and i'm like well okay we'll give this a shot i don't you know and uh i sat out and i'm like holy shit this is a great cigar and um i uh, but i haven't i i don't really know too terribly much about it and i looked on your website and i saw there's a story behind it but i'm gonna let you tell that all right so that's also coming from the new factory the glitch actually came from a mistake uh the funny thing is i was also looking to have a cigar uh looking at the economy i say okay people if they're gonna keep the same amount of cigars they're gonna be smoking probably they're gonna go a little down in the budget or they're gonna smoke less and, and keep with the same cigar that they like 14 to 18 dollar cigar whatever so i say i want to have both of both worlds but we were just blending cigars, but one time, like at the call from the master blender, a little frustrated, of course, saying that someone messed up the cigars. 
he said straight up like that. And so we 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 had a team meeting, my brother, him, and I. And he was, of course, very mad. Hey, the cigars is not the one that I tell the rollers to do. And it was a private label project for somebody else. And we said, but the cigar tastes bad. It is a bad cigar. No, but it's not the blend that the customer pick. But we had to try and whatever. And we find out that the cigar was good for what we yeah. were actually I was looking for a budget cigar. And we find out that the guy messed up the coach because we don't tell the blends to the rollers in case they jump to another factory. We just tell coats for tobacco and they just work for the plants and the supervisor makes sure that they put in the right tobacco in it. So that's what and we say, bro, but do we have a true story. It's glitch is a it's an error in a system, and this can be a happy glitch. So we wanted to have a cigar that is like six dollar cigar that tastes like nine dollars. That's I think everybody that have my thinking and everybody that have tried the glitch, they don't think it's a six dollar cigar. I always no, give, I would I, I would put it at six bucks. And I always tell them how much will you pay for this cigar? And they always tell me 10, 11, 12. And I'm like, do you know that's a six dollar cigar? How can you do that, Jonas? No, the thing is. Sometimes you are out of budget and you want to have a good cigar. I need to have it. It's about that. Like, but that cigar has binder Mexican. All right, straight that you're gonna have great combustion in a cigar. You have a mm -hmm. little bit of the Pennsylvania, a little bit of the Green 98 in the in the filler, and then you go if it's a Bano or wrapper or Mexican or Connecticut, you have a great cigar with actually good tobacco. Probably it's not gonna be the great A tobacco, but it's a great A, let's say. Uh, type of work. We make those cigars like we're going to make premium. We just don't use the same tobacco, grade A tobacco for the other cigars, because of course we need to we need to uh, let them know that they're going to have a little less in complexity, but they're going to have a quality cigar for six bucks that really, really can compete with the nine dollar cigars. Oh, for sure. And, and you know, that's the thing. I the the few that I've smoked uh, that I had, um, the 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 construction on them again fantastic burn line draw all that stuff i mean it it it, it was a great constructed cigar but then you're right in terms of the flavor i mean you know i mean no disrespect when i say this it probably it doesn't vary a ton you know but it's mm -hmm. good and it's solid and it's a nice enjoyable cigar nice enjoyable smoke and you're right i would not have put that at six bucks i probably would have said you know, somewhere that nine to ten dollar range, you know, something like that. But at six bucks, you're right. It keeps it. It keeps that dollar cost average real low. And it allows people to have. I mean, shit, man, on a busy day when I'm sitting around and I'm working on my newspaper or something like that, and I'm burning through cigars as I'm working, I could go through, you know, four or five if it's a long day and four or five cigars at ten, twelve dollars a piece. You're not looking at a, you know, fifty, sixty dollar day. Whereas if I'm looking at, you know, the glitch, it's six bucks. I mean, that's now, a, you know, a 24, $30 day, which, you know, still, that's not bad. That's not bad. And if you want to do it every day, you want to smoke three cigars a day, $18 plus taxes, let's say $21 mm -hmm. a day or for the next 10 days, we're talking only $210. That's, that's going to be, you know, more than a box, like two bucks for sure. So it no. really depends where you, what route the customer want to go. Are you well, going to have everything for something for everybody? And, and it's, I was going to say, it's smart for you as a company because now that puts you in a different category that you you weren't necessarily in before, which is that affordable, um, uh, wallet friendly cigar. Then mm -hmm. you have that category set. You have the 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 core line and everything set and everything. I know you do some limited edition stuff periodically, not mm -hmm. a ton which I like and appreciate because, you know, sometimes you get these brands and I'm not talking any specific brand. I don't want anybody getting all bent out of shape, but you know, sometimes I think people can lean into the limited edition a little too hard. And yeah. I think that takes away from the core line when they do that. Your bread um, and butter has to be your core line for sure. It has to be. So short, short runs. I like to do it. I did it even more at the beginning because I needed to put my, my, my name out there. But for example, I did a short run for, for, uh, uh cigars daily. Uh, and now we're going to put it to the, to nationwide during PCA. We're still going to advertise superb, 
but also we're going to advertise the cactus wren. As, as it, will, it is the state bird of Arizona, we pick one of our best accounts in the country to be like, uh, to have it for a period of time first as a thank you to them, to, to him too. And now that's a show that I'm going to have. It's already, it's ready. It has almost a year already, the last production. It has to be at least nine months. And we give some some entertain, but also anytime this year or the next year, depending how much we have going on, we're gonna have an elite cigar. Talking 16, oh. we got a cigar. Yeah. We wanna have be in every place we can be because we have to do it. And we gotta no. show that we can do it. And that's true, and that's smart because now you're giving consumers the wallet friendly cigar, you're giving them the core line. Periodically you do a limited run, but then you also have that that celebratory cigar that one that maybe they don't smoke on the regular maybe you know they do it on a special occasions you know the the they just found out they're gonna have a grandchild or they just you know celebrating their divorce or whatever it is they want to do and celebrate you know they they have maybe they closed a big deal at work you know that's something like that now they have something that they can go to from your from your company that that appeals to them at that moment exactly very, very smart. So yeah. what else is on the horizon from Blackbird? Uh, right now, is, I'm, in my case, I'm traveling a, like a, a lot. Yeah. And I'm opening you know, or knocking doors that I didn't knock in 2022 because I was solidifying accounts. I was doing, uh, visiting people that I didn't visit when I, when I started doing events and things like that. So it's about showing the smoker community that we are here to stay. Like we're not new anymore, but we also want to show them that they're going to find quality with us. Depending on the range, our cigar always going to taste more than the real, more than the, the real cost of them. Like if it's a $10 cigar, it's going to taste like 14. That's what we working and focus on because we want to be here for the years to come. We want our child and grandchild to also be motivated by us. Not, we don't want to force them. You got to work in the, no, no. I want them to feel proud. Like, can daddy can i work with you <laughs> because every every of my friends tell me how good you are how badass you are you know <laughs> that is more motivation for me than money man yeah like, you know the most of the kids you're not their hero it's whatever rapper or musician or whatever i want them to see me as the hero that will yeah. be the most uh, um the most uh, uh, appealing or the most the nicest Gift that God can give me. Daddy, I want to be like you when I grow up. Oof. <laughs> Oof. And I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really do uh, uh, follow and appreciate your company because, you know, when, when was it you guys launched? It was, a, it was right before COVID, correct? In 19, okay, 2016 was the first okay. process that I did when I was okay. working at the other factory. But after that, a couple, uh, like one year and a half, I quit. So we have the first batch from the new factory that we were working, that we did a joint venture. In 2019 was the first Two Cigars Crow and Raven back then, and The Nest. That was the bundle. Okay. Cigar. Okay. So, you know, so let's just say 2019. I mean, then you, so you guys are out for a year, you know, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and you got to figure out that. And I will say, you know, for for a um, I don't really like using this word, but for, for a boutique brand, mm -hmm. you know, that that comes out right before covid manages to make it through covid and everything. You're right. You guys, you, you know, I've, I've seen you guys are you found your footing. You're going along, but you're having fun with it. Yeah. Whereas, like, it seems like there's other brands. And again, I'm not talking about anybody specific, you know, that that maybe they came out right before COVID. You heard about them a little bit during COVID because let's be real, a lot of cigar smokers were trapped inside. They were smoking more during COVID. And sure. uh, and then, but then after COVID, they, they, their presence just kind of like did the, and, and dwindled and dropped and everything. You guys have st stayed on the scene. And I will say, walking around TPE last week, um, you know, your booth was always busy. And it see and and when I was talking to other people about you know how's the show going, I heard a lot of like, eh, could have been better, could have been better, could have been better. Come by your booth and you're like, we're crushing it. 
we're doing great. And 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 I wouldn't have believed that. I would have thought it was PR spin if I wouldn't have seen all the foot traffic and all the people at your booth. And that and that showed me that you weren't just blowing smoke. You were you were actually like you were getting orders. You were seeing people. I have a great TP TP, of course. Yeah. I would love to see more people on the halls, but we've got to be honest. Like, how do you find how good it was? How busy you were? How many customers from that were in the show floor visited you? We did very we did very well for it. And I think PCA is gonna be even better. Uh we have been since we started, we have been in the map, like social media. You can see everywhere. I'm 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 traveling. Yes. Something. And the good thing about it is like, yes, when you are when you have your goal that you what you want to make in life. When I started this with my brother, with my partner, my brother, my brother Vladimir, I was still with League in the USA and he was already traveling and doing things. I was and I started this company with him being illegal. I was started doing events, taking trains because I was afraid of taking airplanes. Um, and after that, it's just grinding the street, knocking doors. A lot of people say no to me at the beginning. Now it's different. Um, but you have to sacrifice some stuff, family time. Uh, sometimes yeah. even your health, that is not negotiable for me nowadays because I am more mature. I like to have the right, the right meals for me, even in the road. But it's also that you cannot make a brand just because you have 20 years of smoking cigars. You cannot make a brand that it doesn't, that that your customer won't feel it. Like if you say, oh, it's Jonas, I'm making Don Jonas cigars. Am I well known as a master blender for the last 50 years? Yeah. It makes sense. If I'm, oh, my father was a big smoker. They don't care. Like you have to make a brand that really, uh, uh, attracts people because they feel identified. A lot of people came to our brand because they love the slogan, the motivational slogan that we have. I can't clip my wings, follow your dreams. And they feel like, I still remember people have texted me telling, bro, I was almost killing myself, but you motivate me to stay alive. Oh, wow. You know how impactful no. is that for me? That's huge, man. Bro. Yeah. Because... It's not only selling cigars. It's amazing to do numbers and whatever. But when you are on the road and you don't have fun and everything is just I just like want money, money, money. When you are right here and you just focusing money, you're gonna be very lonely. That mansion that you're gonna have, and then you, hey, why my friends don't call me at least for a birthday? So you gotta pay somebody to be with you to hang yeah. out with you. We call it lambones in Dominican Republic. The guys <laughs> that only hang out with you because they're gonna get something out of you. I don't want that. We want the complete mix. Yeah, we want to be financially successful, but we also want the customer to be our friends, the the, the owner of the shop, uh, the consumers. If we if we can get together, we wanna we wanna have enjoyment. So no, you you is, you know you you bring the party, man. I mean, like I said, you know, uh, seeing you in person at trade shows and and seeing the videos and pictures from events. And then, you know, I will say in terms of social media, you guys have been really, really good about leveraging your social media and doing, you know, interesting posts, not just, oh, look, here's my cigar, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, you know, you're, you're having fun. You're doing the little videos and the reels and everything. And it, it works for your brand. I mean, it, it, like I said, it brings the party, but it's not obnoxious about it. Like, you know, other, other people that might do that, but I won't get into that. Um, <laughs> well, I just I have I have all these opinions that are coming out and it's like whatever. Um, the other thing I will say about your your brand and I'll just you know to, specifically and I've taken the band off because you do have large bands. But two things: first of all, you have this little pull tab here of the little bird, and it makes it so easy to take that band off when you've got that little pull tab there because there's there's a couple of different brands that I again won't mention that. You know, their bands are impossible to get off, and it's so obnoxious to do that. But the other thing that I love about your your cigars and your bands, they're so colorful that in that sea of brown in the humidor, your cigars just pop so quickly right and so easily, and they're so easy to find when a cigar shop carries your your brand. That's that's the mindset. Like, okay, our mindset is mother. For the modern and the seasonal smoker, but when we created the brand Blackbird, we say, how do we play smart against a bunch of eagles? It's the respectful way to say, 
uh, to talk about the mainstream brands. And I'm like, we got to make noise. It doesn't matter if we are mosquitoes, but you know how much they bother when they doing this? Uh -huh. We're going to do that. The same thing, <laughs> we got to pop. We got to do, we got to incorporate music in the Instagram. We got to do funny stuff. But we need to respect craftsmanship all the time. Fun, but we're going to respect craftsmanship because we understand that we are in a gentleman's business and you can have the, 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 the most beautiful brand. But at the end of the day, if you don't respect the art of making a cigar, you're not going to succeed anyways. So it's, it has to be a mix of harmony, marketing and the product all the time. And of course, if the man behind the brand is nice, because what sometimes I have customers that tell me, he made great cigars, so and so, but he's a douchebag, man. I don't <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I don't even want to smoke his cigars in front of people. I prefer to buy it and go and smoke in my house because I know my buddies are gonna tell me, "Do you really smoking that that guy's cigar the way he treated us when he was here?" <laughs> you know, and we're not gonna yep. mention price, like you say, right? <laughs> I was saying, we don't have to mention, but I may maybe after we're done recording, I mean, we can trade some names. But yeah, well, no, <laughs> no, but. It, it it's just it's a small industry man and and you know all it takes is that word of mouth that like oh he's a phony he's a jerk or something like that and it spreads really really quick and so you know you got to be authentic and so and i yeah that i have to tell you about that authentic if you're not a master blender also don't call yourself a master blender because mm -hmm. you don't sell cigars there's a couple of guys that they, oh, I'm the owner of so-and-so and also a blender of the same company. And you know, you know they're not even from DR or Nicaragua. Yeah. What I'm telling is, I respect the hustle, but be authentic. I have never called myself Master Blender. And I am from the Dominican Republic. I look like one. If I tell <laughs> everybody I'm a Master Blender, they, they don't have a chance to, to, have, to have the information that is otherwise. I have 14 years in the industry. I know a lot of stuff. Yeah. I came from being in the factory for a lot of days, making cigars with my master blender papo every day. Yes, I have knowledge. But I think the only way you can be a master blender is by getting the reputation. Every time, let's say, I go, to, I call Nick, hey, this is my new creation. Try, 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 try. And eventually, you would tell me, I think the master blender Jonas is doing a great job because there's no college giving you the title. You are a master blender in Spanish. Tú aprendes de manera empírica. You learn on during the days over and over again. And don't feel bad if you're not a master blender and you want to sell your cigars because you can be a great guy making relationships. You can be a great guy talking about your product. You you was also in the decision of the final product. Don't feel bad about it. Be authentic. And people really feel it when you are you're not authentic. And yeah. also you don't want to have you don't want to have the people finding out that you are not what you said you are. Yeah. Yeah, no. That that's nobody likes a liar, you know, or nobody likes uh, you know, uh, an ego trip that, you know, whatever. So yeah, no, that's valid. And to your point, I guess it's kind of like a nickname. You can't can't give yourself a nickname. Well, you can't give yourself the master blender title. It's got to be your reputation is built because of the people who is talking about you in a positive way or a negative way. Earn the reputation as a blender, but you have to like that's going to be twenty years, twenty five years working in that. Yeah, no, Take that's a, that's a that's a <laughs> really great point. Well, why don't we do something else here real quick? It's time for the Billiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Billiger. Billiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family-owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Billiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. So this is the time of the show where we talk about what we've been entertained by. So be that TV shows, movies, books, podcasts, whatever it is that you've been kind of consuming in your downtime that that you think maybe somebody else who's looking for something to be entertained by might be interested in. And so whatever you've been watching or in it, I don't know if you've been too busy to even do any 
entertainment consuming but uh if you'd like i can go first and then you know you can get an idea as to what this is all about go first <laughs> all right so so lately i have been uh been watching a couple shows um as i've been sitting out in my my tents and having cigars at night um i've been continuing to watch the americans which was a show on fx it was about um uh it, it's set in the 1980s during reagan's uh administration and it's about uh, this family and the parents are Russian spies that are that are living in the United States and doing their missions in the United States as part of their Cold War activities and everything. And it's been a really good show. I've been continuing that and uh, I've been liking the, the, the spy intrigue and all that and, and everything going on. Uh, the other show that I've been watching lately is uh, it's one also from FX. It was also on Hulu called The Bear. And I watched the first season of that. Um, I've, I've watched it previously. I'm rewatching it now because the second season is, is out. And that's all about a restaurant in Chicago. And the owner of the restaurant, he passed away. His brother takes it over. And it's all the trials and tribulations that his brother's going through, taking over this, this restaurant, trying to get it out of financial problems and everything like that and distress and, and, uh, uh, you know, just the, the work of, of running this restaurant. So I've been watching that lately. What about you? Have you seen anything or listened lately, to anything? Read lately, anything? Lately has been very hard. The only way I can watch something is actually in the airplane right now. Okay. Which now I'm, I'm loving the airplanes more than before, because when I'm in an airplane, there's no way that somebody can really, Force me to work if I can't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, um, but I, I was watching the, the 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 another section of the Money Heist. Do you, do okay. you guys, remember the guys from the Spain that did a lot of things? Yeah. It's interesting because you can actually learn a lot of stuff. Not about robbery. It's about be take your time before you do something. Like we are in a very desperate world. People want to do things. Next day, just be patient, do your calculations, do your thing right, aim, and then shoot. But do your thing. That's what I like about that. I also read books whenever I can. Uh, I just finished again, the Ultimate Cigar book. And I'm going to read it again as much as I can. Because yeah. I think you always have something to learn about cigars. Even inside, there's always a new hybrid of tobacco. There's always, uh, I don't know, a new paper for bands or whatever. I think you have to be on always learning about the craft, but also learning about what's going on in the marketing side. What can we do? What can we not do? Because we are limited by, uh, oh, it's tobacco. It's tobacco. And the weed is getting phenomenal. Well, oh, it's tobacco. It's tobacco. Come on. Don't tell me smoking kills. You know how much McDonald's really kills? <laughs> My great grandmother, she died at the age of 108, smoking one oh, cigar. Wow. A day. Every day, and she died at the 108. In my case, I am so sorry if you're listening, telling me, Jonas, don't say that. But let me tell you, I think cigars is kind of healthy. Whatever help you with the stress relief is healthy. I 100% agree with that. So I am sorry if you don't agree with me, but that's my opinion, and this is a free country. <laughs> no, I 100% agree with that. The relaxation that comes from doing it and the 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 for the forced relaxation that's what i call it it's like yeah. you you force yourself to sit down for an hour to an hour and a half and just chill out you know as you're doing it and if you're smoking while you're doing something that's when you're not getting the full enjoyment of the cigar out of it you know that's why uh guys will buy the really cheap cigars when they're out cutting the grass and things like that it's like they don't want to you know they want something to smoke but they don't necessarily want something that they're going to like really sit and concentrate on, you know, and they don't want to spend the money on an expensive cigar when they're doing that because they know they're not going to be able to concentrate on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, there's two things. You can have the cigar as a tool to hang out with the guys, but you can also use the cigar for your time. You finish after work. It's your time when you're focusing and, oh, I want this cigar to burn even. You already taking away whatever stress mentality you were having. Thinking yeah. So you want that. That's healthy. For me. No, nope, 100%. 100% agree. Well, then we have one more thing to do while you're here, because I know you got to catch a plane. Guess what, motherfucker? It's time for three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week. 
And so this is the moment for you to just uh, give a plug, give a shout out to to whatever three cigars over the past eh, week, week and a half that you've uh, smoked and enjoyed. They can be your cigars. They can be anybody's cigar. I don't know if you're one of those guys that only smokes your own cigars or if you try other other companies and see you know kind of not necessarily to to you know steal from anybody but just to see what else is out there enjoy the products you know that kind of thing so um so again i can go first or if you'd like to go first it's up to you a cigar that i like yeah three three cigars you smoked recently that you liked i like the fuente añejo okay padron 1926 okay both uh, very solid I, entries. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me see. What's the other one? Is this, oh, I'm really a fan of the Tabernacle Red. Ooh. Especially the Lancero one. Okay. I like that. I have a great relationship with Nick, too. He's a great guy. So, yeah. Tabernacle. I actually smoked one last uh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm no, always I, trying to smoke what's out there, what's the people smoking the most, where the palate goes. It's good for me. I enjoy it too. I don't smoke cigars that I don't like. After an, If I need to wait an inch to like a cigar, I don't have time for that. If I'm yeah. going to burn my money, I always say burn it right. <laughs> no, that's a valid point. You know, I don't put up with cigars that, um, you know, it, it's hard to find one that, that I truly hate these days. I don't find one that, you know flavor wise i'm just like oh my god this is horrible you know um for me when i tend to give up on a cigar it tends to be construction you know if it's just if it's just not burning right or cracking to hell or something like that it's like i don't i don't mess around with that it's like i i have better things to do with my time than fight the cigar that i'm supposed to be enjoying you know that kind of thing so I'll, i'll move on at that point but uh um now, for me, in terms of ones recently that I've smoked and enjoyed, uh, no no kissing ass or anything like that, but that Blackbird Rook that I had at your bro- booth at TPE, right. that's on my list of ones that I really, really dug this past week. Um, I want to say I smoked a La Galera, Connecticut from, oh. uh, you know, that I that at the show. And I'll tell you what, I'm not a Connecticut smoker by and large. It tends to just tends to be a little too light but uh holy crap i don't know what they had in that thing but it was a really great connecticut had a lot of good flavor um and it had a little bit of oomph had a little bit of power behind it so i i really dig did dig the la galera connecticut and then um the uh last one that i smoked and enjoyed this week uh was actually the um uh, another Connecticut, believe it or not, it was the uh, United Cigars. It was the Connecticut Firecracker, uh, the little guy mm-hmm. um, that they put out. And uh, it's their new one that they're putting out in their core line. And again, um, I was thinking that with the Connecticut cigar, that it wasn't going to have um, a ton of uh, oomph and power to it, especially since you're putting it out as the Firecracker, which tends to be, you know, the whole point of that line is supposed to be like it's a it's a literally firecracker going off in your mouth it's supposed to be very very powerful very strong and uh i'm thinking it's a connecticut how strong can it be it was not as strong as their other firecrackers but in terms of strength for connecticut it was there and uh i think it'd be for a guy like me it'd be a good breakfast cigar but you know for a connecticut smoker it adds a little bit more oomph to it and maybe brings them more into the medium kind of category uh, if they're just like a regular mild smoker. So I really dug it. So, well, Jonas, I know you have a plane to catch. You have to get uh, get on to your next destination. Where can people find like uh, are, where, where can people find you next? Like where where all are you going uh, from here? Uh, Sunday, I got to go to the Dominican Republic for the next two weeks. Okay. And the last week of February, I'm going to be in Idaho doing an event at the Rocketeer Lounge. First time I'm going to be in Idaho. After that, I got to check my calendar. But March, I don't know if I'm going to do much because the, the, the PCA is right there and you got to plan yeah. a lot of stuff. So I got to be careful. April, I'm going to be New York. I have to be North Carolina. 
And I think I'm going to be also, no, Pennsylvania is going to be May. But there's a lot of things I have to do. I think this year I'm going to do around 40 to 45 weeks just traveling. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, make sure you're a road warrior, my friend. And where can yeah. people find out more information about Blackbird Cigars? Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube is Blackbird Cigar. Very simple. All right. Well, I'm about a little bit past way, half way. I'm yeah, maybe halfway. I don't know. I, it's hard to remember. I'm thinking I'm definitely past halfway on this superb. And uh, it is truly superb. I'm digging the hell out of it, man. That's smoking, great. smoking wonderfully. Well, thank you so much for your time. I truly do appreciate it. And uh, we will catch you soon. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonas. And again, I really want to thank Jonas for taking some time out to speak with us about everything going on at Blackbird Cigars and, uh, you know, all of his travels and the new stuff that he's got coming out and everything else. Um, we uh, we were a little, little little tight for time due to his flight. That's uh, that's life on the road, you know, and, and I appreciate him taking some time out before he has to run to the airport and contend with, uh, with all the travel traffic and everything else that he's got going on. So... Uh, safe travels to Jonas, and uh, we will speak with him again soon, someday. Um, I am currently still smoking my uh, Superb, and I am digging the hell out of the cigar. As he said, it's got some nice um, uh, baker's, you know, spice kind of nutmeggy components going on to it. Um, it's got a little bit, a little bit of that leathery component as well that he mentioned. It's just a really great um, medium body cigar. It's smoking wonderfully. I've truly enjoyed it. So if you guys are near a brick and mortar shop that carries um, Blackbird cigars, be on the lookout for the Superb when that hits stores in uh, later spring here. And then, um, yeah, you know, if, if you're not at a brick and mortar that carries uh, Blackbird, uh, he did mention there were a couple online places you can get them as well. Anyway, why don't we now hear about my monthly cigars? This would normally be the time that I give some information about my monthly cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and... 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. Thanks. And guys, while you're over there at My Monthly Cigars, you can check out the fucking good coffee. He's got the Pulpit Blend, which is the Daily Press. He's also got the Lounge Blend, a variety of other blends that you're going to want to try. It adds a nice coffee component to your morning, but then it's good all day. You know, and, and all of them pair very, very nicely with a cigar. So you're going to want to get in on the fucking good coffee. Uh, and then be on the lookout for whenever the fucking good cigar launches. That should be sometime, uh, hopefully soon. I know Nick announced that recently. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the timeline of release on that is going to be. But uh, it will be a limited deal. So you're going to want to get in on that as soon as he launches it. Because uh, supplies will go quickly. So... Uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, in terms of the socials, I'm available on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. I'm also on Facebook where we have the uh, Cigar Pulpit Parishioners Group. You can get in on the fun there. We've had some new additions lately that are coming in and sharing what they're smoking and, and uh, engaging with everybody. And I do appreciate that. It's nice to have that sense of community. Um, I'm on Twitter slash X and YouTube where you can watch this. And, uh, you know, from there, we'll, we'll, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I, there's so many other socials that I could do. I, but I'm, I'm, I'm bored with the socials, um, you know, doing any more of them. So anyway, um, coming up on the show, I don't know. Um, this is, I have been marathoning these episodes, guys. You, you have no idea, uh, kind of how the last, um, Three weeks of this show have gone. I the week prior to TPE, I did five episodes in seven days, uh, getting that all lined up and scheduled out, and uh, and this was the last one that I kind of had scheduled out and planned out. So now we're into uh, 
you know, Nick needs to catch up and get some guests scheduled and that sort of thing. So um, I am uh, planning over the course of this weekend to be blasting out a lot of uh, Instagram messages and emails so that hopefully we get some more people lined up and scheduled out. But, uh, you know, once I know who's coming, I'll let you know. So but it'll be fun no matter what. You know how it goes. I'll, I'll have somebody. So anyway, um, otherwise, I guess uh, final thoughts on the Superb. It's superb. I love it. Um, like I told Jonas, I'm not not uh, kissing ass or anything. This is definitely my new favorite of the Blackbird line. So if you like Blackbird cigars, if you like a uh, uh, like a Habano Sun Grown kind of component to it, this is this is definitely a quality cigar for you to check out from Blackbird Cigars, and that's the uh, the superb from Blackbird. So. Anyway, uh, once again, want to thank Jonas for his time. And otherwise, guys, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. Take care, everyone.